It can't be that bad, oh, 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 it can't be that bad. So when I won that spelling bee in elementary school, <laughs> <laughs> they sent me to regionals, right? Really? Yeah, dude, it was it was a big deal. And so they had given me this book, uh-huh. uh, which contained a bunch of words. And that's the book. Oh, is that book called a dictionary? <laughs> no, <I laughs> or think... a normal book? Because a normal <laughs> book also is full of words. <laughs> they gave they just me hand you a book. R.L. Grimes <laughs> Goosebumps. <laughs> they gave you um, Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. <laughs> the script. The, the script. We need you to learn all the words from the you'll, script. You'll be the part of Ted, but learn Bill's part as well. Yeah, we'll be pulling from anywhere in the script, and those are the words that you have to spell. But I had to. Yeah, they gave me like a very specific small book and that's from that book is where they were going to pull words uh-huh. that i had to spell at this regional spelling bee and there were hella kids at this spelling bee and i w- was pretty bad i procrastinated i didn't really study i Uh-oh. didn't learn a bunch of words and so i lost probably in like the second or third round Beesh. and do you oh, remember what the word was that you lost on parole parole yeah and P-A-R-O-L-E. in the fifth grade o l e no uh, p a r o l e e there might be two L's. E, I still I don't know finish. how to say it. Yeah, you didn't finish. That was kind of weird. Parole. You, you know what you spelled? Parole. parole. <laughs> but when I did lose. Uh-huh. Did you cry? Yeah. You <sighs> guessed it, dude. I stood up and I cried and like everyone <laughs> saw it and it's not my proudest moment. But did, did, did your mom look at you and start crying too? No, they were kind of like, oh, it's okay. It's okay, honey. Like, uh, it's just a you spelling, tried. It's, it's just a spelling bee. No, but at the time they were pissed at me that I wasn't studying. You know, Asian parents. That's a thing. Asian parents are a thing. Yeah. they Very common thing. Are they? Yeah. A lot of people have Asian parents. Yeah, a lot of Asians have Asian parents, I hear. Asian people, typically, yeah, will have Asian parents. You know, I think that's a theory. <laughs> it's a theorem. <laughs> a theorem? <laughs> yeah, it's You're proven. throwing it's math proven. vocabulary it's at proven. me, dude? It's oh, proven. man. Folks, uh, welcome, wee, welcome, wee, welcome. Wee, 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 wee. You French? Wee, wee, wee. I just farted. <laughs> dude, come on. Sorry. It's a big room. You'll be fine. I'll breathe out of my mouth so I don't smell it. I don't know if no, that's better for me. Yeah, that's, I was gonna say the mouth part. The mouth breathing may end up be, 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 be worse. Okay, I'm just gonna not breathe in. Oh, finally, I fooled you into dying, <sighs> folks. Uh, welcome to another episode of ICBTB, also known as It, it Can't, Can't Be, be that, that Bad Podcast. Fo- podcast folks today we're doing our first ICBTB, ICBTB exclusive. exclusive. Alejandro, you want to break that down for them? So an exclusive. Is a French word uh, with the prefix of X, uh-huh. which is French for first. Okay. Um, loose is the middle, mid tech of uh, French words that mean of. Okay. Uh, and uh, live means one, so um, made of one. Wow. You are so smart. I would never have guessed that. You know, I've been told that. That you are so smart? Yeah. Who's told you? My mother. That's beautiful. And that's about it. Yep. The, there we go. The, we got an exclusive, guys. A company reached out to us. Yeah. Tri Coast Entertainment. That's right. They uh, wanted us to watch a movie that they made uh, that they haven't released yet. It's going to come out, like I think, next week, yep. November 11th. Yeah, November 11th. It'll be released uh, digitally, so iTunes, Amazon, Vimeo on demand, mm-hmm. uh, wherever you want to watch this movie. You it's, guys it's will out be able to find it. Yeah. It's pretty cool. We got a chance to take a peek at it before anyone else. So suck on that, losers. Yeah. The first time I felt cool in a long time. It was uh, yeah, it's been a while since you felt cool. Yeah. Um, but Thank you was, for confirming that, man. It was it was a good movie. The movie was called The, the Boonies, Boonies. Uh, and it does sound like The Goonies because it has, it has a similar. It's plot. a little inspiration. You could tell yeah. it was inspired by it. Um, this is a very fun movie. I thought it was something that you could definitely enjoy with you know a group of people and not really worry about what's yeah. happening. It's um, super silly, super kooky, over the top. Once you buy into the plot, you can just kind of go with yeah. it. Yeah, I was laughing out loud throughout the movie oh, because definitely. there are some moments that I did not expect at all. Definitely some lines that I didn't expect at all. Yeah, some um, one-line hitters for sure. I think this is a good movie too if you want to watch something without uh, opening your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> what does that mean? You, so, can, you can watch this movie. This movie has a technology that it'll it'll go through your ears. 
audio and, pro- and project from your retinas onto the back of your eyelids. Oh shit! So this movie is ahead of its time. Is it's what good. You're saying it's good. God damn, dude. God damn. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah. You want to jump straight into the nitty gritty? Yeah, definitely. Uh, the Boonies is released in 2019. Whoa. That's right. This year, uh, it has a runtime of 87 minutes. It's directed and written by Brad T. Godfrey. Uh, it's produced by a handful of people. Yep. Uh, but they had a lot of actors. Do you want to read the actors? Because you have that list, I believe. Yeah, it is starring Cody Ko, Andy Matichak, Kyle Jones, Lauren Elizabeth, and Amy Marie Gartner. It was fun. I had a, I had a really good time watching this movie. A- Andy Matichak was my favorite. Yeah, and Andy Matichak, l- let's just break it down. So... Um, there's a group of six six kids. They're the Boonies. That's the name of their group. They're seniors in high school, and this movie takes place the night, night. before they graduate. Yeah, and and it is uh it isn't it is insane, man. They uh had a soccer team, right? That's how they all met originally when they were six. Yeah, and so uh and they would after practice they would go off on adventures, and they would call themselves the Boonies because Doug, um, who I believe is one of the top billed actors. Who uh, call him? He fakes his death. He call him. Call him worthy. Oh, call him worthy. That is his name. I was like, call him. I don't have his number, dude. <laughs> call him right now. <laughs> um, but yeah, he was. His dad had liked the Goonies, and so he was inspired by their by the Goonies and wanted to name his group of friends the, the Boonies. Boonies because the name of the high school that they go to is Boone, Boone High School. High school. That's I right. like that it was a BHS. Basically, that's and, and like that's, us. That's, they called it BHS. And so I, I was like, oh, we went to BHS. Oh, yeah. That's kind of like us. Yeah. Um, this movie had five characters, six characters that were, well, I mean, I guess all six were pretty strong stereotypes. Yeah. Right. So the Doug was the nerdy one. Uh, yep. He's kind of this like mastermind genius who puts together this adventure for his friends to uh, put them back together as friends. Uh-huh. And also get them to find over a million dollars in cash yeah dude i think he has a very specific number it's like one million one hundred and sixty-four thousand something and four yeah and then when he opens the suitcase it's like all hundred dollar bills it's like there should be at least four singles in there there. should be yeah we know it's probably at the bottom dude. (laughs) that's the other thing that's like maybe it's in like gold coins in like the in one of the pockets maybe it's in half dollars at the (laughs) (laughs) and kennedy half dollars yeah kennedy half dollars um this movie had a cowboy yeah. Played by Ke- Kevin KJ? By no, Kyle Jones. Kyle played New- Chuck. Kyle Jones. And this guy was funny. He was he was my favorite part. And why's that? Because he was he played like a a dumb cowboy. Uh-huh. But he was a very sexually aggressive cowboy. Right from the beginning, dude. This guy was first of all, this movie starts off at like a party. They're like yeah. at a party, but it's daytime outside. And they, yeah, oh yeah, that's a good point. And they <laughs> all a receive a text party. from Doug, and the text has a link which leads them to a video of Doug. That everybody gets at the same time. Everyone in the so high school. Everybody in high school gets this video and they're all like, um, there's this million dollars hidden in the high school. Yeah. Only the boonies know how to solve this crime. Yeah. Um, and if you want to find it, you gotta figure out who the boonies are. And then they all leave the party together. You'd think yeah. that they would like try to separate out so not to bring too much attention but they're high schoolers dude they would get first of all you're you're pumped off of adrenaline because you're thinking they're just um, all super horny yeah that that's too. the other thing about this movie is they're all super horny Ho- yeah hormones are just pulsing through their veins which dude. works out it's fine it makes sense so let's talk about these characters so we got kyle jones playing chuck who is this cowboy with a southern accent and yep. he's super horny yeah one of his first lines i think is your favorite he gets he kind of just he gets, gets hit, hit by, by a car. car and he goes it's okay my big dick broke my phone i immediately thought of you oh when well, thanks because i got a not necessarily because uh, you do own a cowboy hat you do have some pointy shoes that uh some white pointy mm, shoes not anymore uh, not you throw those away just don't have them ah rest in peace to your white pointy cowboy shoes they weren't cowboy shoes but they were pointy enough that they, they could weren't pass pointy. off they were squ- why are you getting defensive you love because cowboys they were square toy- i do i you're making <sighs> what's wrong <laughs> my love for cowboys is a personal thing that i didn't know was going to come out on the episode <laughs> So there are a few are, things again, that we can't putting talk my about. Uh, secrets out in the show. Oh, because we've never talked about your love for cowboys in the wild, wild west. Cody Co played a character by the name of Teddy. Teddy, who seems like just not necessarily dorky, but he seems introverted. He's a little quieter, especially in comparison to the rest of his cast. Yeah, he he is a good guy. 
Yeah. Or he he's he seems to be the the most down to earth realistic guy in the group. Yeah. To me. Yeah. Um then there's also uh there's Andy Matichek who yes. plays the role of Holly who's a nerdy girl who just recently got hot and by hot I mean she got these big boobs. And that's and not... I'm not saying that to be a dick. Yep. That's actually what they point out about in the movie and I think one of the funniest bits in this movie is the fact where like she gets she has big boobs which would be a good thing no in any other experience. Yeah. But everybody makes fun of her for having big boobs. Yeah, They're just as... like Pff. Tits McGee and like they say the worst things about her. Like, hey, tits for brains, go do this. <laughs> and hey, she's what's the tits for brain. She's so funny. She's uh, very overreactive. Yeah, uh, for they sure. they make a point to explain that she has utilized uh, her vulnerability to her advantage. She like falls to the ground if she yes. gets. She's over dramatic. She, she falls gets, to the ground she, if she gets overwhelmed. She gets cornered at one point and just kind of like throws herself on the ground. Yeah. And like nobody does anything. She's like, you guys don't feel bad for me. Yeah. And they're like, you've done this at Sunday school. We're used to it. You, We know you do this. And she's like, whatever. Whatever. And <laughs> she like immediately is on to the next thing. Yeah. She, the, and you know what the next thing was? What is it? She says, uh, and I know this is out of context, but she says, if you guys don't kill me, I'll show you my boobs. And then immediately everyone's like, okay. Well, half the, the guys are like, okay. And yeah. everyone's like, no, wait a minute. Wait a minute. No, where's the million dollars? Um, and we have Lauren Elizabeth, who plays the bitchiest bitch of all bitches, oh. uh, Stephanie. And that's not me trying to be a dick. That is just what the movie poses she her to be. She plays a pretty stuck up bitch uh, who apparently has a bunch of money but is mean to everybody. And might I say, and you can uh, disagree with me if you want, she yells for about 97% of the movie. But she's not saying dumb things. No. she Without her, the group wouldn't get as far as they were going. Like no. She really kind of got the shit together and got, got everything going. She definitely here, drove the plot. Here was my problem with her. What? She should have just said motherfucker. Yeah. She was, she, but they explain at the end the people, uh, the rest of her good, friends. That's right. Oh, the rest of her friends say, "Stephanie, why do you keep saying mother effort? Yep. Just say fuck." And yep. she's like, "Well, I'm a good Christian girl." That's right. Which is very contradictory Spoilers, because, but whatever. She's talking about like uh, she's had sex with this person, she's had sex with that person, she gave blowjobs to this person. No, she no, she no, only gave blowjobs to, to people, people she that she loves. loved. Folks, listeners, I know. We know that you haven't seen this movie, and you must be wondering. You want to? You want? You got to see this movie about? because yeah. it is it is a bonkers movie that gets that that has some funny funny interactions. Uh, yeah. There's another actress. Yeah, her name is Amy, Amy Marie. Marie Gardner, and she plays the role of Electra. Yes, I said Electra. that correct. She Electra. Did, that, she changed her name to Electra. Well, do you remember what her name was before? LV or something? I can't remember. Elvira. Uh, I don't think Elvira, man. <laughs> <laughs> Elvira, queen of the night. <laughs> um, so Electra is like the goth. She's like, they call her a goth chick, but she she's kind of just like doing her own thing. She kind of like disappeared. I don't know if she necessarily dropped out of high school, but she like disappeared from high school, and they, everyone thought she had died. If she was in our high school, she would shop at Hot Topic and have the studded belt. There and have go. like the fingerless gloves, mm-hmm. uh, eyeliner, heavy eyeliner. Um, she would listen to bands like Green Day and Fall Out Boy. Yeah, and it seems like a lot of people kind of uh, steer out of her way, like uh, sh- you don't want to fuck with her type of thing. I'd fuck with her. She seems cool. Uh huh. You'd hang out with her? Yeah, she was hot. Yeah, she was. She was cool. I, I liked her personality. She was a uh, a lot more calm than the rest of the cast. I'll tell uh, you that. Oh, are we missing anybody else? And I think no, I think that's uh, a Doug. Doug's the nerd who's who's dead and sets this whole thing up for everybody. Yeah, pretty much. So uh, we tackled the main core of characters and actors. Uh, let's just jump straight into this plot. One of my favorite parts was when they do get kind of separated into like the Scooby Doo gang sort of thing. Yeah, where it's like two, they kind of get paired off. Mm-hmm. Uh, is there like interactions where they're like, all right, well. Uh, yeah, what do we what do so we do? What do we do now? So like one of the pairs that is separated is uh Chuck the Cowboy and Stephanie the bitch. Yeah, which and, they are exes. Yeah. yeah, Chuck used to date Stephanie. Yeah, and it's not like a subtle nuance that you could miss. They make it very apparent well, that Chuck they've had Chuck still sex. has feelings for her. Ch- and he's not good at expressing those feelings. He's a very straightforward. Well, and he's very drunk throughout the movie. As soon as the movie picks up, he's double fisting beers at the same time. Which I've never seen. Oh, I've I at least tried to do that. You tried to do it. For sure. And how, how'd that work out for you, my when friend? When you pull the both bottles down, that just like makes the like thunk and like 
spill sprays beer all over the place. Oh God! Well, that's just the way you're drinking it. I did. I did notice that uh, he vomits in the beginning of the movie, and Stephanie vomits later on in the movie. Oh, you think that was like a little? It's like a little like little thingy. Little tip of the hat. We both vomit. <laughs> <laughs> that's what we're meant to be, dude. We're the vomit twins. <laughs> uh, do you notice that at the beginning of the film, right when he gets in the car that he's hit by, he vomits into his cowboy hat? Yes. And then he. Cleans it a little bit. Yeah. And he just throws it on the ground. Like a true cowboy. And he puts it back on. What? Cowboys throw up in their hats? No, but if they did, they would keep wearing their hat. That's disgusting, dude. He would. He smells like shit throughout this entire film. If any cowboys listen to our podcast, let us know if that's what you would do. Yeah. Um, are you team throw up in your hat and put it on? Or are you team throw up throw in up your in boot? Your oh. Yeah. Cowboys, would you rather throw up in your hat or throw up in your boot? You choose. But you have to pick one. Yeah, don't choose both. Don't be a motherfucker like that. Yeah, that's like that. weird. Come on. And also, if you pick boots, it's just one boot. That's it. Not you can't you can't disperse it 50, 50, 25, 75 between your left and right boot. Don't be a don't be a douche. Don't you douchebag. <laughs> hey, uh, so the other thing I want to talk about in this movie What's is th- so they're in the high school uh-huh. trying to find this uh, treasure, and this high school has a like north wing that's been closed down for years. Yes, because. It's haunted. Yeah, there's this like rumor <laughs> that it's haunted, and, and then like, they open it up, and it's just like a storeroom. They just have like extra cabinets in there. And it's a little like, messy. It's such a high school thing to like um, be scared of and be like, it's it's because it's haunted. That's why yeah. they closed it down. Yeah. Like, no, it's just old. It probably has asbestos. Yeah, that's all it is. Pe- I want. I wanted to go ahead. Oh, people at my work say that. So we have like uh, multiple facilities at my job. Oh, and they, they say, say like, haunted? yeah, they say like, oh, this one, this used to be an old Birkenstock factory, and it's for sure Birkenstock haunted. Birkenstock factory. Yeah, it's so random. And now we flipped it to a, a, like a biopharmaceutical manufacturing company. It's kind of kind of odd. I do have a ghost story. Oh, let's hear it. So I used to work at uh, the First Street Cafe in okay. Benicia. And much of those buildings in Benicia that were built uh, in the early t- turn of the century, they were brothels, right? Oh, The shit. Union Hotel was a brothel. Uh-huh. First Street Cafe was a brothel. Washington. They're all... Benicia, Benicia legalized prostitution in like 64. Like... <laughs> they yeah. Just got rid of prostitution. God damn. James Lemos Pool was literally... James Lemos was literally a pimp. Um, really? That's who that was? Yeah. Anyways... First Street Cafe was haunted, and they say by, like, a female ghost, um, and that she only really comes out when the guys are alone upstairs or whatever, and I remember them saying that to me, but I was new, and I just chalked it up to them being assholes to the new guy, uh-huh. and one day I was, they, there was, like, a little, I used, I, like, a Harry Potter shack under the stair, and we would keep our wine and, like, extra crayons and stuff in there, Okay. and one day I'm t- taking wine bottles from the crate on the floor up to the shelf, probably about eye level, and I put one bottle there, and I reached down and grabbed the next one, and I didn't put it lined up with the other bottles, I just kind of put it on the shelf just to put it somewhere. When I reached to grab the second bottle and came back up to put it on the shelf, I watched the first bottle that I put slide over to line up with the other bottles. Oh my gosh. Wait, and then it turned so that the label was facing with all the other ones. You saw all of this? Yeah. I put the next bottle down, go to reach for the third bottle. When I come up for the third bottle, the second bottle does the same thing and turns the label out. Uh huh. At which point I put the rest of the bottles up and just kind of get out and close the door and I'm finishing closing up. And one of the guys, I think it was, I think his name was Jacob, was like, hey, what's going on? And I was like, dude, I was just in there and I swear I saw one of the bottles turn and it was and and he kind of like laughs and he goes that was her i, I can't remember what her like name he was he knew about it yeah. for and the goes, longest time and he goes that means she likes you when she helps you oh shit so oh okay i got slight goosebumps because that i immediately thought what's the other end of the spectrum then if she doesn't like you what does she do well some of the girls i think i worked with a gal named megan okay and she used to lose shit constantly Oh, fuck. At work. Okay. And then she'd like, so she'd lose her keys or something like that, and then they would be in like a drawer upstairs. Okay. Or 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 she, you know, she'd put her glasses down to wash her hands or her face or something like that, and then they'd be gone. Okay, so she would just move and shit. Just fuck with them, dude. God damn. Okay, at least it's not like a dangerous ghost it's not like but that's like anything the, demonic i mean not to me i thought it was but that's the only ghost story i mean at least she was very helpful to you she you were like she liked she liked men apparently thank you that's what it seems like if yeah. she's fucking with girls and like moving around their shit yeah do you believe in ghosts oh yeah definitely i think um see but i don't believe in ghosts that's why i think this story what? is so crazy so what is your explanation as to why this stuff is moving? 
You don't have one. You just uh, you're, which is interesting because usually when when something confuses you, and yeah. this is the type of person you are, when when something doesn't make sense to you, you do stop in your tracks to investigate and to to get and get to the bottom of it. I do, I will say I was so creeped out that I just wanted to get out of that room gotcha. and just get out, get away from it. That and makes like, sense. Mo- and move and I just wanted to get get away. I've had a couple experiences like that where like I have this weird feeling. Um, and I just kind of want to like get the fuck out of there. Uh-huh. Um, but that was definitely one of the the creepiest feelings I've ever had. What's odd is that you you've made it a point to express how much you dislike horror films yeah. and dislike scary things, yeah. but you don't believe in ghosts. And do you not believe in ghosts? To uh, was that? Do you think that's like a defense mechanism? Like, of course they don't exist. Like, that's your explanation for it. Uh, I think it's just one of those things where it's like, if ghosts were real, right? Uh huh. Um, we're definitely not seeing it on those ghost hunter shows. Yeah, because all that's not fucking, it's fucking real. Hack. Yeah, we're they're... definitely not getting it in those seances, right? Because that's not real. That's uh-huh. like haunted mansion stuff. Uh-huh. And it's like, um, where is the proof? Where's the beef? Uh huh. Well, that's the thing with the supernatural. I think that we are such. We are being humans. We need physical evidence, which is why we believe in science. Science gives you hard evidence. And uh, that's why it's so easy to believe that something as as vast as the supernatural. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's you can't prove anything. I do want to say, um, What's up? you know, they, they're exploring this abandoned wing of the school. Uh-huh. And it reminded me a lot of when we were in high school and we would go to Mare Island. Oh, shit. I, I, as soon as I saw that. I wanted to ask you, do you, do you, do you ever do that in high school? Do you ever Hell go? Hell yeah. I've gone to, what was it? The unemployment center. Mm-hmm. That building is creepy. So I don't know how you did it, but when I would go, uh, the group of friends that I would go with, we would enter from the top, the top. and then we go would down. go down. And then that was the hospital, wasn't it? Woo, was it? A, that's freaking me out. Because now that that's it's... the only building that I wouldn't go into. Oh shit. Maybe it was, it was a, a hospital. hospital. Cause even modern hospitals, I don't like going into. So I, and, and, I remember the one where you had to. I thought that was the hospital. I'd been into the 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 shops uh-huh. on Mare Island. Like they had like a shopping center at one point, right? Uh huh. Um, and this I remember is way going back into, when ben. I remember going into the stores. Well, I mean, there was all abandoned. It's not. There was literally okay, no, okay. All the glass windows were busted out, Jeez. and like it was scary, bro. Okay. Uh, the apartments, we used to go walking through the apartments, which I think is probably the scariest place to walk through because you know people were leave, living. Oh, like homeless? Yeah. People were li- I, I in feel abandoned, like, like in hotel any apartment. building. Um, oh, for sure. Yeah, because I know when... Do you think kids still do that? Do you think kids yeah. still explore them? Yeah, for sure. But the police are more present there now because yeah, there's absolutely. more stuff going on. They film a lot of movies out there on Mare Island. Yeah. I think it's a lot harder to get away with. It's a little more active. The, the police... We would pull up... We would roll up with like four or five cars. Yeah, man. I got I got caught up when I was there one time. Really? Yeah, so when we had gone into what ne- what is, what is I'm now learning is the hospital. Um, what we, I think is the hospital. Yeah, what you think is the hospital. We we heard something outside. We heard heard a car roll up, and it was a police vehicle. And we had been in there for like twenty minutes, and there was like five or six of us in there. And I was thinking, like, what the fuck do we do? Like, we could get in trouble. Um, was I was he like, call- everybody come out. What did he say? Yeah, basically everyone come out because they had seen us peering over uh, the ledge because we were at the very top mm. of the building. And so I had a game plan in mind. And uh, You're like, I'm gonna run to the left. <laughs> I wasn't trying to outrun the cops, dude. I was gonna be like, what is the most uh, rational explanation that I could give this guy. And so I'm like, okay, guys, just follow my lead. And so we all go down. Uh, you took the lead. I took the lead, which is very rare because I'm usually yeah. like, oh, okay, I'll just, I'm someone down for whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Someone else take the lead and I'll, I'll support. But no, I was like, I don't think anyone else here uh, has been here before. I was like the only returner. Mm-hmm. It was my idea to go there. And so I'd walked up to the, to the policeman and he was like, hey, you know, it's very dangerous over here. Like, we just got to, like, there's a lot of homeless people that just, like, hang out around these parts, and we don't want you to get hurt. Like, what are you guys doing over here? And I said, hey, uh, officer, I go to Diablo Valley College. I'm a film student over mm. there, and I wanted to do some research, and I heard a lot of... Uh, scary places were out here. Yeah, scary places were out here, and I, we wanted to shoot a scary short film. And specifically this building was recommended to me and so i wanted to scope it out and he was like oh you can't do that there's like a lot of legality issues but like okay if that's all you were doing then that's fine we just don't want you kids to get hurt i was like okay officer thanks for the heads up boom and that was the last time i'd ever gone actually 
Really? Yeah, but yeah, the officer was super cool and like yeah, because they bought know, my I, reason. I, I think what's funny is Vallejo police. Anytime I've had an encounter with Vallejo police, uh-huh. they're always like afraid that I, I'm doing something way worse than I'm actually doing. Because uh-huh. Vallejo can get kind of sketchy like that. Yeah. Or when like when it's just some dumb kids in a car, or it's like just some stupid kids in an abandoned building. It's like, yeah. oh, thank God, I thought it was a gang with guns and Sorry. crack. Yeah. <laughs> if anything, we're the um, thank the God least it's just of some their stupid worries. kids. Yeah, because I could just tell them to go home. I don't have to sign yeah, any fucking uh-huh. papers. I don't have to like. One defend other, myself. One other thing I want to touch on um, uh-huh. was they in this movie they have to break into the school. Yes. Have you ever had to break into a school? Damn, dude, you're asking the hard hidden questions. Um, not necessarily because, because I'll talk about it. Oh no, I'll talk about it too. But you go first. It looks like you have a good story. <laughs> well, because I remember in high school we used to go into a school and hang out. Like we used to. Oh. Do you know what I'm talking about? Gosh, yes, I know exactly what you're talking so, about. So uh, we won't drop any of the names of the people no, not who were involved all. with this. but And we won't drop any names of the specific schools unless you were going to. Yeah, I was going to. All right, go ahead. Uh, we used to go, well, when I was younger and would have like, we would go out and, you know, we didn't have a place to go because we were 19, 20. Yeah. Um, but we wanted to like drink and smoke and do whatever and like, you know, experiment. Um, we wouldn't have a place to go. So we'd have to go find a place to do stuff like that. Yeah. Well, one of our friends had discovered a way to get into the courtyard in uh, Joe Henderson Elementary School. Oh, damn. And uh-huh. so for like three months. Yeah. F- four months? A good period of time. Like we, a, would go, we would go there and like hang out. We had a specific group of friends that would just go there. I do remember the last time I went, uh-huh. uh, because it was, it, because one, it became like a fairly biggish group of people who would go there. Yeah. Um, the last time I went, I remember someone was like setting up a hookah. And uh-huh. I was like, this is too much. This like, is crazy. Like, th- we're setting up a lounging area yes, at this point. Like, you're setting up something that, like, like if someone were to walk in and see that, it's not like you could grab your shit and run. You have, like, a whole no. water and hot coals and, like, tubes and it's shit. It's not like if police were to roll up, you'd be like, <laughs> well, one no, second! Yeah. Or, or, <laughs> or even, like, uh, I don't know. We just we just walk over here. I don't know what this is. No. Be like, someone left their hookah. We were just trying coals, to return it. These coals are <laughs> burning currently. <laughs> so like when they had that line of like I don't know how to break into a school I was like I know how to break into one, one school. school although they have different fences now and stuff I think it'd be a lot more difficult dude on the, that fucking fence that may have been like one of the last times like where there wasn't alarms and cameras and shit because you know they got cameras now oh after that for sure they 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 upped probably the because of system. that incident I um one time when I went there I cut up my favorite pair of Levi's jeans dude. jumping the fence yeah dude it was cut that? me in the, like cut my jeans right in the crotch area was I there. Um, I don't know for that specific one. I know that. Uh, no, did you ever play La Migra? No, um, I was too too much of a big boy because I couldn't physically run. I didn't. Want I used to. to love playing La Migra. I know you. So did. from people, which is apparently a, only a Benicia thing. Yeah, I'm sure. So from people, for people who aren't <laughs> from La Migra, whatever, we're going to talk about this. Uh-huh. Um, there's a game that we call it's called La Migra, and it's essentially giant tag. And so you have two groups of kids. Uh, you have runners, and then you have the taggers, or la migra, uh-huh. and they're in cars. And so you have a, a point from point A to point B. So it'll be uh, Jack Lennon Park. It doesn't matter if you know these places. It doesn't matter. So you pick a park, like Jack Lennon Park is point A. And then point B would be uh, Ninth Street Pier. And so you'd have to run from Jack Lennon Park to Ninth Street Pier without getting tagged by the group of taggers who are in a car. Uh, and you're running through parks and backyards and streets and neighborhoods and jumping over fences and jumping i ran across a freeway a couple of times are you serious yeah what, what? hey bro whatever it takes to win really you see yes bro you were deep into this game well because i would also have like a couple of older friends who were like seniors and they'd be like come on this is the way to do it what am i gonna be the one who's like no no i'm not gonna do it damn yeah, no, uh, yeah, well, especially when you're hanging out with older kids, that means a lot in high school. You're like, well, I got a man up now. Yeah, man, you got to man up and, and be a man. <laughs> you have to have the balls to do it. I don't know. I I never had the balls to do it. I've had invitations to do it, but I just knew, like, oh, I'm not going to get far in this game. Lumigo was a lot of fun, and now I think they should change the name, but it's still a, a game. I do remember a Facebook post was going out, like, last year or something, and they're like, um on that Facebook patch or whatever, they're uh-huh. like, everybody watch out. These kids, they're playing this gross game. And like, it was on the news and everything. Uh-huh. And they're like interviewing kids in front of the high school. And they're all like, oh yeah, I, I heard about this game. I've never played it before. Uh-huh. And I was like, yeah, cause that game's like 
eight years old. That like, shit's real we, old. By the time when we played it, it was already a dying game. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? So it used to be more prominent. I think prior to I must our have been. I think when my brother was in high school, they played it. I know that. I know for a fact they played it when my brother was in high school. Uh-huh. But I think it it's always been one of those things. Where like, yeah, you do it once or twice, and it's like. I yeah. just thought it was an insane concept. I mean, I was a very safe kid when I was in high school, so I was like, well, why don't I'm we just play that, tag? That, I'm surprised that. <laughs> La Migra is something that I did that you didn't. Really? Yeah, because you were always at the high school functions. I, I was. You were always at the high school functions. I didn't go to many. I wasn't invited to many. What? Really? Yeah. I think, no, most of the ones that I went to, you were there. Because, like, that's where... We were friends. I mean, like, do you remember senior year? Everyone was just hanging out with everyone. Senior year was different. I was, yeah, I guess oh, yeah, so. Senior year was different. Yeah. Um, but let's because talk- you know why senior year was different was because we were graduating just like these kids in the movie that's right way to tie it back in yeah folks this movie is fucking funny i know we barely touched up upon it but at the end of it but at, it's a coming of age story you know if you're graduating high school well, p- p- pop this movie in your eyes you know yeah I mean? you you're you're gonna kind of get it it's what's beautiful about this movie is that uh, Doug, yeah. the guy who set up this diabolical plan of like setting up clues and this hidden treasure, um, he did this so that he could be reunited with his friends from elementary school. And what was breaking his heart is that they had gr- all grown up, they had gone their separate paths, which is something I think we all could relate to. Sure. Sometimes friendships don't necessarily end, but they grow apart for no reason at all. Like different circles of of friends. Uh, you know, they they come to fruition and like you guys go your separate ways and sure. there's no particular reason as to why you don't hang out with that uh, person. specific person anymore. And so that's what happened to all six of these people. None of them were friends with each other. No. Um, and so he was like, man, I miss those adventures that we used to have. Let's have, you know, one final adventure before we all graduate and do whatever the hell we do. It's a shame he had to kill himself first. <laughs> Wait, what? It's a shame he killed himself to get them all together. Yeah. Um, do you have a best person on side award? I do. It's going to go to Doug. It's going to go to Caleb Worthy. Wow. Okay. Because I, I... He has the most lines, I think. He does. He reminds me of uh, Toby he's Maguire a little bit. Up. He yeah. is acting up a storm. Like, you, he's trying his hardest, and, like, I do find him believable. There are there are moments... My f- Okay. He, like, <sighs> he has a character that thinks he's very smart, uh-huh. and is, like, doing riddles and poems and shit like that. Yeah. But constantly, everybody's like... He's being stupid. It's this. Uh-huh. And then like at the end, he reads a poem to kind of like save their lives. And they're like, why are you doing poetry right now? Yeah. They're like, <laughs> <laughs> but that's the joke of the yeah, movie. I, I thought that was a really funny trope. Well, what I found uh, pretty hilarious about the film was that for such a comedic uh, movie, there was a lot of dramatic pauses. Oh, yeah. And <laughs> Just, they took their time. Mm-hmm. Um, it's And it happened like in the most random spots. Um, you know, there there were be a bunch of moments where they're just super back and forth where they're all sitting in a room uh just yelling at each other i cannot emphasize how much, how much these... yelling there is yeah but it's funny it is funny stephanie's always yelling at holly the big boob girl and holly's always screaming because she's scared of something chuck is always having these crazy perverted one-liners saying you know what he said to stephanie there's what? he what? says you are going to be the only girl with the vagina that I love. He calls her like the, what is it, my golden vagina? Like he goes yeah. like weird names. Yes. Um, do you remember the cheerleader? Uh, and the, the, yeah, the who jock? ends up being, yeah. The cheerleader looks like Aisha Curry. Did you think that at all? A little bit. I mean, kind of. I wanted. I think the cowboy was bigger than the jock. Uh, and then the, yeah, the yeah, jock yeah. football player that was chasing him mm-hmm. the cowboy could have beat the shit out of that guy easily cowboy was, uh, was a and big they, boy all the jocks had golf clubs right mm-hmm. but, but they clearly only had one golf club set because they all had like different clubs yeah <laughs> all the one had a nine sizes. iron someone had a, a wood someone had a driver at least they were sharing uh my bps is uh andy matichak and uh remind me who again who that is holly that is holly okay as and why is she your bps and i can guess why uh-huh. so um, you guys you want to check out this movie because she has two heavy hitters and by heavy hitters i mean acting chops so you want to yeah it's a good movie guys uh we would like you to watch a movie with us a movie with us we, we want to watch like a movie a movie with with us we we just want you to watch a movie with us the name of the movie is is boonies Boonies. and it's not to be Uh. mixed up with the 
Goonies, there's a lot of boob action. Not really, but it's pretty funny to me. Okay, that's our musical bit for this episode. We have at least one. Um, but yeah, folks, um, once again, it's going to be dropping November 11th That's right. uh, digitally on a bunch of different platforms. iTunes, Amazon, Vimeo On Demand. It's all over the place, guys. Yeah, guys, um, check it out. It's a super kooky, silly movie. Um, you're going to recognize all these cliches and stereotypes that exist within these characters. And you're going to be like, oh, that reminds me of this person. Um, yeah, you definitely reminded me of the cowboy, dude. Oh, thanks, buddy. You, you reminded me of Teddy. Real, thank you. I <laughs> wish we could. Sh- we can't spoil this film yet because we it hasn't dropped it yet. yet. It's way too new. But uh, on that note, <laughs> just keep talking. About- <laughs> but you guys will never know because no- this is what happens. Okay, baddies. Uh, Until next time. Bye. Yeah.